So build the career you want. You've already had a chance to hear about some of the amazing things IBM does in industry with our clients and some of the unique opportunities that IBMers get the chance to, uh, to take to uh, give back to their own communities. And the, the amazing thing about IBM is that IBMers are, they're all like that. I mean, every IBMer I know, it's not just about themselves. It's about helping one another. It's about helping their communities. It's about giving back to the world, making the world a better place, making the world a smarter planet. And we, we live that day to day in our lives, and I think uh, both at work as well as with our day lives. And the only way to do that is by partnering with one another. Now, you've heard some different aspects about IBM. You, we talked a little bit about the different groups that we, uh, that actually, uh, the, the different business groups of IBM. So let's go a little bit more in detail as it, um, it, as it regards to our opportunities, right? Global Business Services, our consulting division. It's really our business consulting group. They're the ones who are focusing on everything from strategy, application innovation, application management, uh, getting into um, the, the true business consulting versus our GTS group, which is maybe getting in, which is global technology services. Global technology services focuses more on IT consulting. Uh, they are also getting into some of the key areas that some of you may be interested in, uh, focusing on cloud, including building the, the cloud for Watson. Um, a lot of that work is being done out of our Austin labs today. But uh, cloud and cybersecurity are, are major initiatives for us within our global technology services areas. Uh, we're looking for a combination of business and technical uh, within that area. Uh, global Business Services, they have what's called the Consulting by Degrees program. I'm taking a step back to that group, um, which is for undergrads uh, through all different degrees. It's consulting by degree, and actually they, they work with students from every degree you can think of. Uh, a lot of times we're looking for those individuals who are, have a focus on maybe potential focus and strategy uh, consultant. Uh, excuse me, strategy consulting, or it could be uh, getting more on the technical side. The, at the advanced degree level within Global Business Services, we're looking for analytics skills, uh, you know, master's, PhD level, but also we're looking for MBAs. Uh, we look for strong MBAs that can go into our strategy and analytics group, and actually they're changing that on us now, and now it's going to be called business analytics and strategy, I think it is. So I'm really hoping that they keep that A in the middle, you know, <laughs> B-A-S as opposed to the alternative there. So you know, we'll see how that goes, but a lot of times we have so many acronyms at IBM, sometimes we forget you know, to think about those little things. So um, sales and distribution, uh, another key group that hires a ton of um, students directly from colleges and universities for internships, as well as for uh, full-time opportunities after you graduate, both at the undergrad level and at the advanced degree level, uh, especially MBAs. The MBAs that they target for S&D, which is called the Summit Program, um, are usually like client reps. So you are, you are the main point of contact for C-level and you know, senior level contacts at these companies and you are there to make sure that that client is happy with every business group, group and every product and service that we're bringing in uh, to that particular industry or client or whatever it might be. We also have opportunities within S&D Summit which again, sales and distribution, that's exactly what they do. They, they sell and distribute products and services. Um, you know, so at the undergrad level, we're looking for technical sales, both on the hardware and software side. We look for um, a, a business majors who can do more product or branding specialist roles, uh, both at the intern as well as full-time opportunities. Now, we've kind of just gone through the cycle of full-time opportunity. As you, you probably know, fall is a big time of year where companies are coming to your campus and talking to you about full-time opportunities that after you graduate in May or June of next year. Internship opportunities are just starting to get going. Um, the positions, some of them for certain programs, and I'll get a little bit uh, into that just a little bit when we talk about more of the different business groups, but um, the, the, the cycles really are usually starting in December where they're posting most of their opportunities all the way through into the March uh, and <laughs> unfortunately even up to June where we have some managers who are still posting for even summer internships that maybe last through August so if you're thinking about an internship a couple things we'll talk about a little bit later including some postings we have on your own campus website but also our, our cycles with uh, some of these different groups and, and programs we're going to talk about let's talk a little bit about research I had the great opportunity to meet with a PhD uh, student here uh, in CS uh, just recently and uh, we were chatting outside with her I think she was from Iran 
and uh, she was looking for an opportunity within research. Well, our research internship program is one of the most coveted. Uh, we have multiple uh, labs throughout the world. I'd say two main labs in the U.S. Uh, one up in San Jose, which is our, you know, our, which is our Almaden lab, uh, San Jose area. So some, those of you that don't want to leave California during the summertime or for an internship, and you're at the Ph.D. level, uh, that is one area if you really want to get into research. They're the ones who are driving the patent developments, uh, you know, and, and uh, or a big chunk of them, I should say. There's some people outside of research who just got really pissed off at me for saying that at the moment. But, um, you know, so from a research perspective, that's truly what they're doing. They're researchers, and their focus is on research and to, through all sorts of different areas, getting into physics, material science, computer science, uh, electrical engineering, mechanical engineering, or a combination of many of those, nanotechnology, all these different things that IBM does to support the different clients. And essentially, why do, why do companies come to IBM? You know, first of all, it's not because they, I mean, they're not going to come to us with the stuff they can do themselves. They're bringing us the hard work. They're bringing us the hard stuff that they don't want to touch because they know either they don't have the resources to be able to accomplish it or they don't have um, the proper equipment to be able to do what they need to do to get it done. So, well, guess what we do? And we've been doing this for years. And our research division, kind of funny, um, actually kicked off many years ago at, out of a fraternity house. Um, our first research lab was out of a fraternity house, which you know, not many people know. Um, so, but from that, it's grown to what it is today with uh, a number of different labs all throughout, the, all throughout the world. So if you're a PhD student interested in research, um, we do have some different flyers and stuff, and I'll, I'll get into the, some of the program links that'll take you directly to learn more about those opportunities. But the majority of their hires, especially intern hires, they're going to start December, January time period is when they're really thinking about uh, the research internships. Software. Now this is probably where I'll spend a little bit of time talking about, and not too much because I know we like to spend some time talking with everybody if we can. And we have some great IBMers back here that will be more than willing to you know, answer some questions you might have. But um, let me ask a quick question. How many are undergrads in here? Okay, good. Uh, advanced degree? So probably, how many of those are technical with the advanced degree? But MBAs? Okay, so a good combination of some business skills, some technical skills, undergrads, advanced degree. That's great because we look for all of that, <laughs> which, is, which is wonderful. Um, now, software group, the reason why I want to pause here a little bit of that, and it goes to what Ryan was mentioning about the mergers and acquisition space. Big chunk of what we're doing in California, and especially if you want to stay in California for an opportunity, um, and I, uh, the, the managers that are local in this area, most of them probably came through an acquisition, yep. including myself. I came through an acquisition of the FileNet product line. Uh, that was back in 2006, so I think I lied to you, uh, maybe eight years I've been, a little over eight years, uh, not nine. Um, and that was pretty crazy for some of us because we were this kind of nimble, mid-sized company, one to two billion dollars. All of a sudden, we just got gobbled up by a hundred billion dollar organization. <laughs> Did I ever think I'd work for IBM my entire life? Not a chance. Or doing what I'm doing today? Absolutely not. There's no way you could have told me that this was the role I'd be in today, going around speaking with you know, extremely intelligent students like yourself, getting to go on campuses, getting to meet IBMers, and uh, just having that wonderful opportunity to get to know more about IBM, what we're doing, and, and to kind of make connect the dots between those talented students with the, the um, roles that we need to fill. So um, software continues to grow, in, especially leaps and bounds up in the Bay Area, continue to do acquisitions in some really neat play, um, areas such as smarter commerce. And um, so if you're looking for an internship and you're technical, um, or if you're looking for a full-time opportunity, we have quite a few of those within Software Group, especially in California. The Bay Area, San Jose, Costa Mesa, those are kind of our key locations, but we also have some up in Oakland area. We just did a, a new acquisition up in that area, and before that we had another one about three years ago called Big Fix. So California, the majority of what we do have is Software Group, but there is still Global Business Services, SND Summit. We still need to sell and we still need to uh, provide those services to our clients. Outside of research, software group, GBS, and um, you know a little bit within uh, maybe GTS, a little bit in STG, that's really what, it, uh, that's really where the opportunities are within uh, the state of California. Now if you're open outside of California, there's a lot more, especially the farther east you go, locations like Austin, Texas, 
Rochester, Minnesota, where I met Ryan here as an intern uh, three years ago, yeah. I think it was. Uh, and uh, luckily I got out of there before the winter time. It, just, it gets a little bit colder back there than California. And I think he got tired of the cold, you know, being in New York and Rochester and now, now down in San Diego. So we're lucky to have him out this direction. Now, systems and technology group, uh, any double E's, mechanical engineers? Okay, so we do have some of those opportunities. A lot of that is, I would say, as you get farther east, you have some, a little bit up in Northern California, um, uh, some in Austin, Texas, but a big chunk in like um, Poughkeepsie, New York, uh, Rochester, we do have some in Rochester, right? Yeah. Uh, getting into, uh, who is it? Raleigh. Raleigh, North Carolina, absolutely. So, and, and, and some more locations as well. If you want to be on the side of uh, engineering, uh, product development, things like that. Uh, whether it's hardware or software, we're playing a key role in all those different areas. Um, global financing, now there's very limited opportunities in there. We really, we target MBAs. Um, maybe they have a couple hires a year within that program. So, you know, it's, and they like to target programs back, you know, east, at least the managers, because they can go onto campuses themselves. And then the very last one, corporate, which is where Ryan and I sit. We get the fun opportunity to support every single one of these groups and as you can tell this isn't an updated slide because we don't have Watson on this as well so that's our, our new business they're gonna have to figure out how it works because it looks so nice right it's all <laughs> perfectly fit you have one more where are you gonna put it yeah. <laughs> so um, but Watson is such a key area for us right now and it's, it's a cool factor to it because you know it was on Jeopardy it beat the top Jeopardy champions now it's going off and saving the world well, you know, that's our expectations, of course, right? But to do that, we need to have that collaboration with our clients, with our partners, as well as with the IBMers that are, are working toward those goals of, you know, focusing on an industry and how do we take this cognitive computing and uh, that has this deep capability with natural language processing. So you can just talk to it normally and, and get the deep analytics response back on your company, how your, you know, something might be performing or how some system is working or not working. And you can take those analytics and you can do predictive uh, analytics to understand what you need to do for your future to be successful, to be competitive, uh, or to potentially save a life. You know, it's, uh, you have so much data coming nowadays in these sensors and technologies, which starts with Smarter Planet. Sensors, connectivity, data. Now what do you do with that data? How do you understand it? And then how do you grab it? And how do you, uh, how do you create it and develop it per industry. And that's really what IBM does. We get into the thick of things, we get in and understand what a company's trying to do, what an industry, what a government. From that, maybe it involves just some software or some services, or it might involve getting the hardware side involved as well as in putting those sensors and things that have today, up until today have never been in because they weren't small enough. Now they're in everything. They're in our their phones, they're in parking spots. You can go park somewhere and it tells the sensor that you're parking there and there's only X amount of parking spots left on the second level of a parking garage. Well, you can actually add that to an application and up in Northern California, for example, and now you actually can see on the streets where you can find a parking spot and how much it's gonna cost and you can actually go get that parking spot and when you're eating at a restaurant, as opposed to having to run back out with some quarters, you can just pay another hour from your mobile device. These are the types of things that IBM helps connect and these are the types of opportunities that we're looking for great students to come in and help to support us on. And that involves technical, business skills, as well as uh, management skills. And, and so, talk a little bit uh, quite about the different uh, programs. Can I stop here? Any questions? Anybody have any questions right off the top of their head about some of the things here? I know I kind of covered a lot and I'm throwing everybody under the bus here by making you raise your hand in front of your peers here, but any questions? Yeah, back there. I'm curious about the corporate department for that business unit. Is that located everywhere as well? Corporate is, well, in certain roles it can be. Um, you know that you have different responsibilities. You have corporate HR. Oh, you have corporate HR, you have corporate marketing, and corporate finance and accounting. Now, a lot of those opportunities are based, as you go farther east, there's more people because that's where our corporate sits. You know, it's in Armuk, New York. and. Um, so there are more corporate opportunities as the farther you go east, but even even in the general locations and the sites that you go to, you have to have HR representation. So if anything from corporate is outside of the corporate world of East Coast, I should say, it's probably like corporate HR, those types of roles. I'm sure there's some other stuff. Uh, we have corporate strategy opportunities right now. Uh, and in fact, that group is hiring pretty, pretty heavily. Uh, especially for new MBAs that are going to be coming out. Uh, they're looking for some real top MBAs that can do strategy internally with IBM 
without having to do all the travel as our global business services consultants do. All right, that's one thing I should probably focus on. If you want to be a consultant, you better be a road warrior mentality. If you're not, if you think, oh, I like to travel for, you know, go out on vacation, I love travel. It's not the same thing, <laughs> you know? There's some people who really thrive in it. They love it. And the reason for that is because they're going to a client. They get the opportunity to kind of see what's under the hood of these major international organizations or, you know, a you know, media entertainment company or something. You're talking to the C-level or to the senior executives and their engineering teams, and you're getting that deep insight about what's going on. So three years of consulting. You know, business consulting like that is like 10 years in business. So you're going to gain some valuable knowledge and experience by being a consultant, but you've got to put in the time and the effort to do that, right? Okay, good question. Back, another question right there. I'm just curious about one question that, you know, I always wonder, I'd be a business machine, international business machine. Yeah. Then what made you switch from designing a computer to a completely different area? Is that competitions from different is that the competitions from different companies that are coming to design similar computers, or is it that you find the opportunity in this area more than designing computers? Well, we realize we, were, we we know what we're good at, and we know where we're competitive, and we know where the margins are, right? And it's very hard and very challenging. And you see big companies, the HPs and of the world and stuff, and the IBMs, where we're selling different uh, parts of our hardware division. Like uh, you know, we sell we sold our Lenovo laptops, but we still use them. So we still have this partnership with, with Lenovo. We just sold off our X-Series servers to them. Um, and why do we do that? Well, they, for us in the U.S. and trying to manage and manufacture it, it's becoming too difficult, too challenging to make any profit off of. But they're more nimble. They're based in different parts of the world. They, you know, they're corporate headquarters. They see that they can have more success with that type of technology and the hardware manufacturing. In the U.S., we're really trying, or you know, as a global entity, we're trying to wrap around what we do very well, which is the consulting, which is the software, which is um, you know, uh, basically leading in certain areas in research and development. Um, we we still are playing a very key role in uh, creating and developing some of the the most um, energy efficient servers, uh, getting into um, you know things that w help us. Uh, and help our clients with areas such as uh, you know, being able to manage big data, being able to uh, you know, get into the analytics side of that. So while our hardware so continues to support and we continue to stay in the hardware space in different areas, in fact, even semiconductors, we sold off a big chunk of what we do in that space, but we still want to own the, the intellectual property. And we're still doing and putting billions of dollars towards the research within semiconductor technology, trying to make it more efficient, more and smaller. You, you get to a certain level and things start breaking down on a molecular level and you can just you know, fry an, uh, an entire building if you, if you go too small and something becomes uh, essentially, um, at the atomic level, makes something blow up or you know, catch fire. So you have to know these things. You have to have experts in material science and physics. And uh, by the way, our, uh, we have five Nobel Prize winners all in the, in the space of physics. So we continue to stay in that space. We're just picking the right areas for us and where our expertise are, uh, where, where our expertise is today, and um, where we feel we can be most competitive. And if we don't think that, then we could potentially sell off certain pieces of that to our, to our um, partners. And hopefully we stay connected to them because we still do quite a bit of business in the with the X series, with our clients, we still are getting in there and doing a lot of uh, work with uh, on a consulting level as well. So, good question. Us. Yeah. Go ahead. Oh, go ahead. oh sorry. Go ahead. Are from injury management, is a new course called injury management. Interning management. Oh, sorry. Injury management. Is engineering 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 management. Engineering. Okay. So, what are the opportunities that uh, you hold for these? Within man within management side. Injury management. Uh, what are the opportunities for the engineering management? Engineering management, I'm sorry. <laughs> My apologies. Um, so from an engineering management perspective, I mean, especially if you want to be on the side of like hardware engineering management, um, it, I it really depends on what you want to do. Is it, if it's engineering management, you want to be a manager of an engineering group or you're just managing the processes, absolutely. Uh, IBM plays a key role, it still plays a key role in a lot of the hardware that IBM continues to sell. You know, we do have other servers and stuff. So uh, from an engineering management perspective, you can either go and be technical or you can maybe manage technical teams or a combination of those two things. So, um, you know, and I would probably stay, uh, say to stay in the area of uh, STG, Systems and Technology Group, would probably be the best uh, business group for you to, to target for that. 
Well, well we have tons of questions. Sorry, right. let's start here. Um, so you talked about how like research is kind of restricted to like PhD students, and like global financing is also more like MBA students. Yeah. What what sectors are probably good for like maybe just like an undergrad trying to like seek like maybe a summer internship or like just some experience before they jump on board? The, like you don't, you're not sure what you want to do right now, but uh, is it more maybe liberal arts or like a business oh, major you're studying oh, right now? Well, I'm a computer science and engineering science. Okay, so you would want to get into more of a, uh, a software development role or software testing opportunity, right? Yeah, but yeah. at the same time, I'm also considering an MBA. Yeah. So it's like... Product so, management. So that's... Or if you like the, the marketing side of it, maybe product marketing, right. where you take your business skills and knowledge and, um, and from a technical side, I would, I'd recommend product management to you because you can, you can leverage both, right? You can understand the technical side, yeah. you can work with the engineering teams, but you can understand the business aspect of it too is, and how a roadmap for a particular product or service, how you can take that to market or improve you know, that particular uh, product or service in, a, in an area, uh, in a specific industry, for example. So I highly recommend like product management uh, for that combination, it's a very good one. Uh, uh, technology sales. Uh, getting into like the client rep role, um, that type of thing. If you if you are to go after your MBA, um, or if you have a, at an undergrad level like a product management, uh, excuse me, like a product specialist role would be good in, in sales and distribution, where you go into clients and you you help to talk about what this particular product or brand um, does and what it can do for them. But you're you're doing that in conjunction with maybe our services groups and some consultants, or maybe uh, our software uh, team that can come in there and talk specifically maybe about a specific product. So you you uh, as a branding or product specialist, you can leverage both your business uh, acumen and knowledge and, and education as well as your technical skills. Um, but if you don't want to be on the sales side, then something like product management for a hardware or a software product is what I'd recommend. All right, good question. Uh, you talked about consultants. Uh, I just wanted to know how different are is uh, IBM consulting uh, from traditional consulting that uh, Deloitte or KPMG? What's the difference between like an IBM consultant yes. and a Deloitte consultant? Yes. Well, in many ways, uh, we do play uh, very similar roles, and we do compete with the McKinsey's and the Deloitte's and the Andersons, and the Accenture. Sorry, um, and you know, in the strategy piece. Okay. Well, and we, the the main difference is we do the full cycle. Of, we have the capability of doing the full cycle, everything from strategy to integration to yeah. management, right? Yeah. Where a lot of these uh, other um, consulting firms, their focus might be just strategy. Right. Um, so I would say the biggest difference would be we, we really do the full piece um, from strategy all the way to integration and, and management. And some of those do as well. Now, here's the big difference from, a, from an IBM or perspective and a differentiator between us and those organizations from a career perspective. And it goes right into this, so thank you, you lined me up very well for this next slide here. See these different job categories? These are all across these different business groups I was just showing you. So what's the big differentiator between us and like the Accenture's and the McKinsey's? What if you don't want to consult anymore? Where do you go? They have corporate, right? Some, some corporate opportunities. If you don't want to consult, then you're in a consulting firm and that's all they do, you're done with the travel, where are you going to go? nice thing about IBM is you can continually tra transition your career. You can continually look for new opportunities that will change your perspective of IBM or change your own perspective and your own experience and background. I had no experience whatsoever working with colleges and universities and students, and, except for maybe a little bit when I was at FileNet. I think I came here a couple times and it's like, hey guys, can you, you're interested, we got some software opportunities and stuff. Now it's like, my gosh, I got to understand every single business group and every opportunity and pulling together is, you know, 80, 90 different universities and colleges and how we, how do we, you know, where do we target for, you know, where it has the best skills and analytics and security and cloud and, you know, so it's like, it's been a constant development of going from one role to the next every two to three years. And for me, it's, that's what I think is, it's almost like a rotational program of my choice. And at IBM, 400,000 plus people, there's going to be opportunities opening up in your group because almost every single advancement opportunity for myself has been because I'm replacing 
a manager or a lead or somebody else that has moved somewhere else in IBM and has advanced somewhere in IBM to change their own perspective, to give them an opportunity to expand their, you know, their wings, learn something new, and uh, hopefully uh, find that advancement opportunity. So the amazing thing about IBM, you may be in one opportunity today, but the networks that you're building, the contacts that you that you have, and what you're learning, even just learning things like Lotus Notes in our same time and our and our connectivity tools and our collaborative tools, that in itself is helping you to connect with more people, to learn more about what IBM does as a whole. And I could you could probably talk to her, even our CEO, Jenny Romani. She probably doesn't even know everything that's going on at IBM. It's too big. It's a massive company, which is good too, though, because that means there's a lot of opportunity here. Now, one more one more note on that. IBM hires probably 70% in terms of their opportunities, they use internal candidates. Most of our opportunities never even get out externally. So that's one amazing difference about IBM. You're in an organization of 400,000 plus people and when an opportunity opens up, you have the first shot at it being an IBMer. Nobody else will even see this, especially if it's filled outside of IBM. So just think about how much opportunity that is for you and to advance your career. You, don't, you could come in as a part of a, a leadership development program or rotational program. In fact, Ryan himself is. He's part of our, HL, our HRLDP, which is great. We got him, which kind of sucks. I'm going to lose him in a year from now. So, I mean, it's good and bad. But that's the same thing with IBMers because we get that opportunity and it's encouraged for every one to two years for you to start looking and maybe you know making a move somewhere else and trying to either advancement opportunities in your current group or to go somewhere else. Because that's what keeps you fresh, that's what keeps you interested, and that's what challenges you. And that's the type of people we're looking for. We're looking for people who are open to challenges, that want to get out there and want to change the world. And uh, you know, aren't afraid to, to get out there and make the, build their own networks and take, take hold of their own career and drive it to, to where they want to go. Because when you do that, that just helps the company out. Good question. Ex-IBMers as well? Ex-IBMers as well. <laughs> a little bit harder because you, you're not in the internal system anymore, right? But ex-IBMers are absolutely looked at very highly. They're probably the second group that we look at. It's like, oh, <laughs> ex-IBMer? Yeah, I yeah, can call him up. Because <laughs> even just those little things like same time and you know yeah. Lotus Notes and stuff, it's not easy. Yeah. How are we doing, Tom? How are we doing, Tom? We're about there. Okay. Yeah. All right. Go ahead, I'm sorry. If I'm not wrong, Vaxen used to be a research lab. Uh, and now they're a separate entity. Are they still looking out for only PhD candidates or people from any advanced degree? So usually, <laughs> I would say it's mainly PhDs. But I have, everything surprises me. Every time I you know, go somewhere, I'm like, how did you end up in this program? I thought it was, uh, oh, okay, well, you knew this person, or you know, you just happened to uh, apply and they called you. I'm shocked because uh, you didn't have a PhD or you weren't from this group or this school. And uh, so just because normally something happens doesn't mean it's always the case. I, we do hire master level, and I've even seen bachelor level candidates come into research, but the PhDs are the ones who are getting to you know, play around with the, probably the coolest research out there. Uh, but still, just getting into research, right? Even if you're an undergrad or, or a master's degree, it would, would be great if that's, if that's your focus. Yeah, question? Actually, I want to uh, talk about Watson. Before we talk about Watson a bit more, uh, how big is the team uh, right now? What kind of hiring needs do you have in addition to the PhD level? Like, for example, are you going to hire software engineers because there are PhD yes. engineering uh, data scientists yes. and the other types of... Uh, so you could talk about it and how big is the team also currently? What kind of I couldn't tell you how big the team is. I don't know where off the top of my head, but I do know we made a $2 billion investment in uh, Watson. Um, so uh, a lot of the team is being built right now. I can tell you I, I, they have some very strong targets uh, for hiring, uh, what we're calling early professional hiring. Um, I don't know all the details about their internship program because last year was their f the first kickoff of the Watson business group. And so a lot of those positions kind of uh, actually fell into like our software group division and uh, so different divisions. But now there's an official Watson group. And so now we're, this will be our first rotation with them on the intern cycle. And once again, a lot of that starts in December, January. So I don't have the details on internships, but full time, it's pretty good numbers. We're talking hundreds of uh, students that they're trying to bring in. Most of those are computer science related. Uh, some on the cloud, so uh, you know, it could be uh, 
combination of some security skills, cloud uh, development knowledge and experience, and also getting into some of that cognitive and analytic side of things. Uh, if you have any natural language processing um, skills and background, that's another, that's, that's another key area for us right now that we're looking for within Watson. But we're going to be hiring pretty heavily within the Watson area over the next couple of years. Yeah. Just as a follow-up to that question, what's the difference between the goals of, say, the software group as against the Watson group? What's the difference? Between the goals. The goals. Yeah. That's a good question. Well, they obviously, they're working on a different product, right? And so they have to, in Watson, their whole goal right now is to make these product, the, the Watson solution, industry focused. So um, while our software group, we're in software everywhere, we have thousands of software products, and most of, them's, most of those are already focused on specific industry or industries. So with Watson, it's now, right, we have this amazing tool, how do we build it for the different industries? And a lot of that is starting with our consultants who are going out and speaking with our clients. And, you know, then, then they bring it back to our research and our development groups, and they're the ones who are working on how do we take this amazing product uh, and how do we uh, take the feedback from those clients and create this particular product and service for that particular industry. They're even doing it for cooking. I mean, they're creating recipes with Watson nowadays. It's like, how does a computer know the, what I like to eat? But it's actually working. So they, I don't know how they're doing it. I'm not technical enough to tell you how they're doing it. But they, you know, having that capability to even to you know, to create better recipes based off of our palate and how we taste things and how these different um, things mix together in terms of flavors, it's just it's mind blowing to me that they're, you, know, you can get into an industry even as something like that from a computer, from a you know programming and you know natural language processing, cognitive computing. I can make food better. I can make it taste better. Really. So right now it's really a big focus on industry. So we're, we're not just looking for certain skills, um, like computer science skills. Uh, one way to differentiate, differentiate yourself is by talking about any industry experience that you have, because that does come into play. How are we doing? Five, five minutes? OK. All right, so I got some sports bags here. Any good questions coming? Well, then we'll break it up. All right, your hands go right up. All right, so question, what's the question? Is back? the model that uh, the research staff are pointing like, Is it Docker research or is that a kind of more constrained to work on the problems that the company has? I'm sorry, say that one time. What, does the, what is the model that okay. the research labs are following? Do they have like, the freedom to work in whatever uh, research program they think? Or uh, they you know, that's a very good question. I think as an IBMers, we have our focus on what we need to fo work on. Right? We, we, there's certain things we know we have to work on. It's like, hey, I've got to get this done by the end of the week for my manager, or I might not have a job. <laughs> but then there's a lot of collaborative so Was that? I, I, I can tell you, it's a lot like academia, doing research in academia. Yeah. You get funded for your research. If you can get funded, you get to do your research. Yeah. <laughs> so you might get to play in the area that you're really looking to do. But there, I'm sure there's other areas as well that you have to focus on. Yeah. Thank you, Frank. Appreciate it. Yeah, it's very, very important. Right right so you, you, question. I'm going to assume uh, you're in a, but you're in a variety of fields. I will be in a variety of fields, but what would you say, may I ask what's the major source of revenue and who are the competitors if there are any? Good question. So our major source of revenue and our competitors. Well, our major source of revenue, the most, probably over 50% of our revenue comes from our services sector. And so um, obviously consulting is a big piece of that. Yeah. Uh, and that's you know probably the biggest chunk of that comes from our GTS group, which is our IT consulting, right? Uh, but another big chunk of that comes from our business consulting. Now, software is the other big area right now. Software is a huge piece of what we do, and it's probably our, uh, one of our biggest revenue generators and, and uh, in terms of margins and profits and things of that nature. But then systems and technology, same. We do quite a bit of hardware uh, and selling of different hardware pieces. So really, hardware, software, services. Those are our main three you know, chunks of revenue. Now, we also have global finance. We're, you know, we're our own finance organization, so we do make money in that area. But uh, the biggest pieces would be those three. And i take the two more questions, and i got two more bags here. And then uh, we'll break it up, and we'll go into some different uh, discussions with the that are here. Yeah, IBM versus over here. Who's, who's around that can talk about you know, who doesn't mind hanging around talking to the students? You guys have some time. Okay, great. Um, software. Anybody from software? Anybody from services? Got a couple? All right, there we go. I think those are the two. Okay, so we have some software group reps from you guys. We have some services from GPS. And Brian and myself can talk about things outside of those two groups. But uh, questions? We have a question. Right. Yeah. Um, regarding the uh, immersion program, where the top 500, uh, I think it's new 
you hire is get placed into a country to learn about the culture. Is or the CSC thing you was talking about? Yeah. Okay. Is that spread across all the disciplines, all the areas? Yes, all across the world and all across the different areas of IBM. Right, right Neil? I mean, you met with IBMers from all over the world that, that were part of that, uh, that were cross business unit and cross business group, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's, it's basically just the top 500 IBMers get fit. So it doesn't matter what country, what business unit they're in from, they get the best of the best. The general management LDP, how long is it? What skills do you explore? Okay, so a couple, couple things of programs up here and then we'll, we'll break up. Let me just go over. We talked about Summit already. Um, the general manager leadership development program, we just finished our rotation this year for hiring for that program. But uh, if you're gonna be an MBA, uh, you're graduating in 2016, that is a possibility for you and you can, you can apply to that. So what this is, is it's a three-year rotational program. It's amazing. You really do get, it's, you're going against the, the best competition of other MBA programs. But uh, essentially what happens is you come in, you, you start your first rotation as a consultant, second rotation is in sales, third rotation is uh, within some corporate functional role. Now the goal is to, for you to become a, um, a leader, potentially a general manager in the future. Now the mentoring that you get is so much higher than what a normal consultant or somebody would come in, almost by like four levels. So somebody who's a senior consultant as an MBA being hired into IBM would come in, they'd have a mentor who's maybe like a, a, an associate partner or a senior consulting manager. Well, it, then you go to associate partner, uh, partner, managing partner, and um, these uh, general ma manager GMLD peers, they get to essentially have the direct access to that managing partner or VP as their mentor and their, their manager. So the whole goal is to get them ready to be a uh, general manager uh, within the three to five years. Very good program. So uh, one thing I do want to point out real quickly, leading the Africa program, uh, this is an internship program in the US um, and Canada, uh, which throws you off a little bit, lead to Africa. But the internship is actually in the US. Um, we're looking for individuals who have an interest in potentially going back to Africa after they graduate, but they don't have to accept an offer to go to, to Africa. We're just looking for individuals who want to come into IBM to get, us, get them some skills. And uh, if they're interested in going back to Africa, then we'd like to talk to them and you know, see if we can get them an internship. And then uh, that gives us an opportunity to sell them on the African opportunities um, as a part of the internship. So uh, we're gonna have some pretty strong numbers coming next year on trying to fill positions in the US for interns for individuals who are interested in that program, potentially going back to Africa after they graduate. Um, and that being said, um, I will probably, sorry, you have one more? This, we, we did talk about this, the Sales Summit program. This is the one where you have a client rep who's an MBA or you have like product specialists, uh, technical specialists or hardware, software. So the Summit program is, they have an internship program and a full-time program after you graduate. Uh, and they target everything from the, uh, you know, once again, MBAs to technical as well. Or, or business undergrads for the product spe branding specialist roles. All right. Okay, so uh, guys, uh, just for sake of time and stuff, um, uh, and we kind of got through, I will point out a couple quick things. This is a good uh, tool for you guys to sign up on because you can actually sign up and you can share opportunities with friends, but also you can uh, get automatic updates uh, for positions that match some of the criteria you're looking for, and those will come directly to you. So it's uh, ibm.referrals.selectminds.com. And I'll just show you one more link to our main jobs. Sorry. All right. That's our main jobs blog. This is where I recommend you guys going to. Um, also, your school system. We have positions posted on the Ant Eater system. I forget what it's called. Do you guys know what the name of it is? is it link. What is it? Link. Link. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. Um, and uh, so we do have those positions posted. And I, I absolutely encourage you to go check those ones we have posted. Stay on top of that because we're going to be posting some more here as we get into the intern season. Um, that's the best way for us to be able to get your information across the country because it gives us the ability to download um, a soft copy in a bulk kind of uh, format of uh, you know, a book of resumes of those individuals who are interested and we get that out to hiring teams all across the country. Um, so that's a very good way for you to get noticed by IBM but also you can go through IBM.com or our jobs blog here. You can identify opportunities that you're interested in yourself. I highly recommend that you apply to those as well because Ryan and I, while we while we love to connect you guys with the hiring teams, there's just too many. There's too many opportunities. There's thousands of them. 
we never can stay on top of every single one of them. So, or know who's on the back end and the hiring managers are spread all throughout the country. So um, you gotta apply to your school system, but also apply uh, and check out the IBM job blog. And that being said, I'll leave this up for some of you if you guys wanna check some of these things out. Um, if you don't, essentially what this is, is uh, and I can't really see it too well, but you can kind of see the, the uh, so IBM Faculty Award Programs, we have Collaborative Research Awards, Shared University Research Award Program, and PhD Fellowship Programs. So if you're interested in any of that, write down the link, check it out on your own time. That being said, I want to thank all of you. It is truly a pleasure to come out here to the Eater Nation and uh, to meet with uh, you guys. And uh, we have some great IBMers to spend a little bit more time talking to you, answering some of your questions. And uh, thank you so much for, for your time today. Thank you.